Hey y'all, uh, it's Annette, this is Tatum Talk. Today I'm talking about the medical commodities business. Your girl tried it out. So was it a hit or was it a miss? We gonna talk it out. Okay, so remember about two videos ago, I will link that video below this one if you didn't see it. About two videos ago, I talked about how I was waiting to hear from the insurance board as to whether or not they were going to approve me for an insurance license because I have a felony, right? After federal incarceration, federal indictment, I had to do one more step, which was get the approval from the, the commissioners to uh, approve me to do business with the felony, right, before I could get my license. And that's what I've been waiting on. It's been like six months, maybe seven now that we're in January. So I finally decided to just try something else because I can't keep waiting around. I got to make a move. Your girl is from New York, well, so I make, I make moves. That's what I do. Right? I decided to try this medical commodity business that I've been seeing and hearing about on YouTube. Okay, so this is what happened. First, let me show you. I'm going to get into, I'm going to break down my operating expenses. Um in a minute but first i just want to show you what medical commodities are so for those of you who are not just hearing this for the first time not sure what i'm talking about i'm talking about diabetic strips right so a lot of people they are they have diabetes and they have a prescription that gives them this medication however a lot of people get an abundance or overabundance of what they actually need so the extras is what I'm buying from them. So I'm not taking medicine that people actually need. It's the extras that they have left over after they use what they need. And in some cases, a lot of people don't need it anymore because they've switched off to using a machine now or something. One woman I met last week told me that she threw away. She threw 20 boxes away. She says they were just sitting around. She didn't know what to do with them. Okay, so, um, I buy these boxes. Here's an example. This is a AccuCheck, and this is one of the top brands. This is 50 count. So I bought four of these from her, and I paid her $12 a box. So I spent $48, and what I get in return is $39 a box. Then I bought four of these boxes. So four boxes of these, these are 100 count. And I think I paid maybe $30 a box, maybe 25 to one person. I bought nine boxes of these. So altogether, this is what I have. I have 17 boxes. 17 boxes that I'm going to be doing an invoice for and getting a payout on. So now we're going to jump into the operating expenses so we can see, did I really make some money? I know I felt like I was making money, but let's look at the numbers don't lie. So let's look at the real expenses that I put out and then acquisition costs. Okay, so let's jump into these operating expenses. It's definitely more than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so let's start with the first thing I did somewhere around the middle of December. I ordered these bandit signs from this place called UZ Marketing, was recommended in the course. This and two other ones. So I went with this one after sourcing from all three. Felt like I got the best price here. Then it was this amount was included uh, taxes. I think it was free shipping. Um, this got me 50. 50 bandit signs. And the stakes that hold the sign when you put it in the ground. Okay, so 133.75. Then when it came, I needed zip ties and an ice pick. Zip ties is to attach it to the poles, and the ice pick is to poke the hole through the sign to put the zip ties on the sign. $12 on that. I don't have a car. So I rented a car so that I could um, go put these signs up. 
probably this $53 was for about three and a half hours. The last half hour was to stop and get food, so probably just three hours. Um, then I rented the car again the next morning because I needed to just make a quick run to Home Depot to buy some more zip ties. So that's this one. More zip ties because I bought the wrong size. So the first zip ties that I bought were like, I think eight inches. And then I bought 14 inches. 14 is good to get around um, a pole like the size of a stop sign pole. But the I went, came back to get these next zip ties because I got, uh, what's the next size up? God, I can't remember, but they're bigger to get around the thicker pole, like um, the wooden electrical, those poles. That's what I did. I needed bigger ones. So I came back to Home Depot and bought some more zip ties. And then I have more. Why do I buy more here? Oh, this was to give to the person that I hired. This was to give to James. So he could have his own ice pick and his own zip ties. So then I went and bought more, right? So then, um, sign placement. He went out two days in a row. And this is what I paid him. So let me see. I had 50 signs. I think I must have put up maybe 20 or so on my own. So 30 signs were left. And he has a car. So my thinking was... Instead of me renting a car and doing the labor, let me hire someone with a car and then pay them to do the labor. So $3 a sign is what I paid him to do like about 30, 29 or 30 signs he did between these two days. So it's $3 a sign and then it was like um, just a little bit more, 33 cents I paid him for mileage. This came up to a little over $100. Then... Okay, I started getting calls from the signs. The first calls that I got were from signs that I put up the day I rented the car. How do I know this? Because I put up signs in D.C. and James put up signs with, near where he lives in Maryland. So I, I started getting calls. I went and met this guy. I got 60. I paid him 60 for two boxes. So that's $30 for each box. Then, the very next day, I got a call from Teresa, so I went to go meet her, and I bought four boxes. Noticed um, she had a 50, she had 50 count boxes, so $12 a box is what I paid, and up here, he had 100 count boxes, that's why I paid more here. Okay, so then, a day or two later, I met up with this guy. And he just had one box. I paid 24 And then the next person was local. I, didn't, I remember him. I didn't have to spend any money to get to his um, location. I could walk there. So I paid $30 that day. Then I spent money on transportation. Craigslist ad. I'll show you the ad in a second. The ad was multiple ads, actually. So it's $3 per ad for me to place a flyer type thing to say call if you have diabetic strips. And then a $7 ad was to place for work for me to, for James to see it and call and say he wanted to put the signs up. So $19. I may have even spent a little bit more than this because maybe I bought you know, more than more signs, more ads than I think I did, but not much more. And then this is who I met today. So she had nine boxes of One Touch Ultra. Okay, I gave her 170. It was like 169. I just rounded it up to 170. And then it cost me so about $25 in transportation. So this is what I wound up spending. So it's been about a month, and now let's go look at the income. So if you look, 
four boxes. All right, let me go back. This is the same amount of boxes. Four boxes here of 50, right? Two boxes, that's 100, and then another box and another box. So it's eight boxes altogether of the AccuCheck. So when I come over here, you see I have the four boxes of the 50. That comes to uh, what I'm getting back is 156. And then I have the four boxes of the 100, I'm getting 280. And then I have the nine boxes that I paid out the 170 today, I'm getting back 345. So this is my total, 781 altogether. Now let's go back to expenses and you see what I put out is this, 740. Wait a minute, you know what? Actually it's a little bit more than that. Because I bought business cards, and that's not even on my list. Business cards, I spent 30 So if you think about it, I spent 770 And what I'm getting back is this amount here, 781 So I really didn't make no money. What the hell did you just say? I felt like I was making money. But it's the, um, it's the expense, it's the advertising cost. So what I'm thinking is, because this is my first month doing it, you know, these are things, well, I will need to buy more bandit signs. Bandit signs, until you build up your customer base, you'll have to buy a couple of times. Zip ties, you'll need again. I won't have to buy ice pick again. The car rental situation, I don't know if I'll do that or if I'll just use James again. I'm not sure. I'm thinking using James again is more efficient than renting a car. And let me show you what happened. I won't even be renting a car right now anyway because somebody hit me on my way dropping the car back off to where it was parked at on the street. And because of this, while they investigate, they suspend your account. So because they suspended my account is the reason why I spent more money in transportation. Every time you see me here, um, transportation, train, bus, that took more time. It took me an hour and a half, sometimes an hour, a little more than an hour to get to the person as opposed to if I could have just rented a zip car 25 minutes to get there. And that happened three times last week that I had to travel and spend extra money, extra time rather, not money, extra time to acquire the strips. I couldn't believe that happened. I still can't believe that happened. It came out of nowhere and then the guy ran. He didn't pull over or nothing. He just kept going. Let me show you my ad. This is the ad. Sign, placer, and courier needed. And it basically just lists out the requirements. So they have to have reliable transportation, a valid license, car insurance, cash app or Venmo so they could get paid, and either an iOS or Android phone. Then I just give a brief description of what it is I need them to do. Give them example locations, a drive through at McDonald's or a poll um, where people exit um, Walmart. Um, what I did with James was I gave him a placement near diabetic clinics and dialysis centers. So I went on Google and I made a list and I gave him all these lists of dialysis centers. So he just drove around at night and placed the ads near these places. Um, then I just tell them, you know, apps to use, Simple Crew is the app that you could use to keep track of making sure the person really puts the sign up. It has GPS location in it, so you could see where your signs are on a map. And this other one that keeps track of his mileage called Vesma. But he didn't use this. Um, I was Googling about it, and I thought there might have been other, like Miles IQ might be a better app. But anyway, what he did was he just um, 
in your maps, you know, it tells you the mileage as you're driving. So he just added up the stops and told me how many miles he did. And then he just sent me pictures. Let me show you that. These are, this is a sign. This is another sign. He would just take a picture every time he put a sign up, basically. So I kept getting texts all night long while he was doing this. He did a, he did a really good job though. Do me a favor, hit the like button. There you go, bro. Thank you. I used the Google form as a link in the ad. Let me show you. All the way down. This link right here leads to this Google form. Oh, wait, let me just show you this. So in the ad, I said I would pay $1 a sign, right? And then this is a courier run, which I never got a chance to pay. I just went and got met up with the person myself, but I was going to pay James $20 to go meet someone from that called and then 19 cents a mile. But to put the signs up, I advertised a dollar a sign and I got 10 people, but I didn't pay a dollar a sign. I wound up paying more than that. You see, 10 people, 10 people. I was surprised that many people responded. These are the questions. So what's your name? What is your availability? Do you have a car? Do you have a valid driver's license? Car insurance? iPhone or Android? What's your level of experience? Putting up signs. One is no experience. Five is very experienced. And most people said, maybe, maybe two people said one, but some said three and some said five. And then the last one is what is your contact number? So that's pretty much it. This is free. You know, on Google Docs, you can make this form. It's a good way to keep track of the people that respond. Okay, so now that that's all said and done, would I continue to do this? Was it a hit or was it a miss? I'm going to say it wasn't a, it wasn't a miss. I, I'll say it wasn't a total hit either, though, because... I only, I'm only up by a couple of dollars. Like I put out, what, $7.40, then I said I forgot to add the business cards on, so that's another $30. So $7.70 in expenses, and I'm taking in $7.81. But what I'm thinking is that those are mostly advertising costs. Eventually, your customers are gonna be repetitive every month because some of these people, I asked them, do you get these every month? And they said, yes. And I also gave them business cards so they can give me referrals. If I don't count advertising costs, I put out 332 on my uh, acquiring the boxes. And then I'm getting back 781. So now that's not a bad return. That's actually a really great return on my investment in over less than 30 days so i would definitely say this is something that you could do but you need to have some upfront money to put into it don't think that all you need to have is just how much it costs to buy a box and then you're going to flip that one box and then put that 40 dollars back in to now flip it into 80. like it's not that easy not the way it is because the only way that could possibly happen is if you have a family member or a friend somebody close by your friend's dad something like that and they're gonna just you know sell you their box or two boxes or whatever they might have around the house you don't have to spend any money in the acquisition costs then that's you know that's a win-win for you but you can't build a whole business on just friends and family so you're going to need to do some marketing and marketing costs. And I don't know if you have a vehicle. If you have a vehicle, it might be, you know, easier. You saw what I spent on car rental. If you have a vehicle, it'll be easier. If not, you're going to spend money trying to just, you know, meet people 
and get around to place these signs in the first place. And the only other thing you could look at is advertising online, Facebook ads. But Facebook ads is a whole other. You're still gonna have to spend money on those ads. And before you could even run a Facebook ad, you need to take care of the back end first. So you need to get a Google voice number, or you might even need an 800 number if you're gonna run the ads nationally. Um, you're gonna need to set up a landing page, a form for them to fill out. Uh, you're gonna have to brand yourself. So you're gonna have to come up with a logo, company name, make a business page. All of these things have to be done first before you even place the ad. I'm not saying that it's not a good way to go, that that is a good way to go actually and i might i might even look into doing that in the next couple of weeks but right now all i did was just local and i thought that that was the best way to get started so as i was editing the, the video from two days ago i wanted to add this part in at the end um i had i had two more acquisitions so for a total of eight boxes I spent $136 and my return on that is gonna be $290. So now going back and adding to the bottom line, what was I at? I'm now profiting a little under $200. Whereas before I was only up a couple of dollars, now I'm profiting much more. Not much more, but more. But um, I could see that I didn't have to spend any more money to acquire those customers as more people call me daily from the advertising i already have out i'm going to be able to profit it'll be all profit um as long as i don't have to you know spend more money on advertising which i may do again in the future but right now i'm getting calls like every other day so right now i'm good and i just want to say you know this is I'm just trying something out like I'm only like 30 days in um, this is just something as part of my rebuilding of my life trying new things and trying to see exactly what's gonna work for me and where I'm gonna land if you've been following my journey on this channel I, I have made it clear that I have started had to start from zero like basically the end of 2019 I literally was from scratch. No place to live, no job, um, no no way of getting income, and not even ID. Like I really had for two months, couldn't even prove who I was. I did not have an ID. I couldn't get an ID because I didn't have a birth certificate. My birth certificate, I couldn't get that because I didn't have an ID. I was caught between, I was like a catch-22 situation. So it took me like two months to straighten that out. I did not have any credit. I had to rebuild that from scratch, from zero. So it's been a journey and I've been, you know, I think I've been successful at doing this rebuilding. But yeah, if you wanna see more of my journey where I'll be trying out new things, you can just subscribe to the channel so you can get notified of when I post a new video. I still have ways to go, but yeah, I'm trying to design this life that I want, that I picture myself um, having. I think I'm off to a good start. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit share and like. Well, hit like, and if you know someone that could use this information, then share it.